I overheard my husband's phone call on our anniversary and discovered his three-year-long con to marry into my family's wealth. Now he's fighting for every penny in our divorce. I, 29 female, have been married to Peter, 32 male, for three years now. Our story began five years ago at a charity gala for local animal shelters. I was there representing my family's restaurant chain, which was a major sponsor. Peter was working as a bartender for the event. I remember being drawn to his easy smile and the way he effortlessly charmed everyone at the bar. To understand why Peter's charm was so appealing to me, you need to know a bit about my background. I come from a well-off family, my parents, Robert, 58 male, and Naomi, 56 female, built a successful chain of high-end restaurants from the ground up. Growing up, I watched them pour their hearts and souls into their business. They worked long hours, often missing school events and family dinners. But they always made sure my sister Sadie, 31 female, and I knew we were loved. Despite our family's wealth, my parents were determined to raise us with a strong work ethic. They paid for our college education but expected us to find our own paths in life. After graduating with a marketing degree, I landed a job at a meat-sized company and worked my way up to a marketing executive position. I was proud of building my own career, separate from the family business. Peter's background was quite different. He grew up in a middle-class family, the middle child of three. His father was a high school teacher, and his mother worked part-time as a librarian. Peter always felt overshadowed by his older brother, a successful lawyer, and his younger sister, a promising medical student. He dropped out of college after two years, much to his parents' disappointment, and started working as a bartender. When we met, Peter told me about his dream of opening his own bar someday. He spoke passionately about creating a unique atmosphere, crafting original cocktails, and building a community around his establishment. I found his ambition attractive, and we hit it off immediately. Our relationship moved quickly. Within a year, we were living together in my apartment. Six months later, Peter proposed during a weekend getaway to a quaint bed and breakfast. I was over the moon, but my parents were hesitant. They worried things were moving too fast and that we didn't know each other well enough. But Peter charmed them with his easygoing personality and promises of a bright future together. He even asked for my father's blessing before proposing, which impressed my traditional parents. We got married in a beautiful ceremony two years after we met. Peter insisted on paying for the wedding himself, saying he wanted to prove he could provide for me. I was touched by the gesture, even though it meant having a smaller wedding than I'd always dreamed of. We compromised on an intimate garden ceremony with just close family and friends. Peter seemed stressed during the planning, often snapping at me over small details, but I chalked it up to pre-wedding jitters. After the wedding, things started to change. Peter quit his bartending job, saying he wanted to focus on planning for his own bar. I supported his decision, thinking it was temporary. But months passed, and he made no progress on his business plan. Instead, he spent most of his days playing video games or hanging out with his friends. I started noticing that Peter was becoming more demanding about money. He insisted that since I earned more, I should cover all our living expenses. At first, I agreed, thinking it was fair while he was between jobs. But as time went on, I realized I was paying for everything, rent, utilities, groceries, even his nights out with friends. Whenever I brought up the subject of him finding a job or contributing to our expenses, Peter would get defensive. He'd accuse me of not supporting his dreams or of thinking I was better than him because of my family's money. These arguments became more frequent and intense over time. I tried to be understanding. I knew Peter had always felt like he was living in his siblings' shadows, and I didn't want him to feel that way with me. I encouraged him to pursue his bar owner dream, offering to help him write a business plan or look for potential investors. But he always had an excuse, the market wasn't right, he needed more time to perfect his concept, he was waiting for the perfect location. As the months went by, I noticed Peter becoming more interested in my family's wealth. He would ask probing questions about my parents' business, wanting to know details about their finances and expansion plans. At the time, I thought he was just showing interest in my family. Now, I realize he was gathering information. Peter also started pushing for us to have children. This was a sudden change, as we had previously agreed to wait a few years before starting a family. He would talk about how great it would be to have a child, how it would bring us closer together. Looking back, I see how he was trying to tie himself more securely to my family's wealth. Things came to a head last month on our third wedding anniversary. I had planned a special dinner at home, hoping to reconnect and maybe have a calm discussion about our future. I had spent the day cooking Peter's favorite meals, hoping to recreate the magic of our early dating days. As I was setting the table, I overheard Peter on the phone in our bedroom. Curious, I moved closer to listen. What I heard shattered my world. Peter was talking to his best friend, Mike, 33 male. He was laughing about how he had hit the jackpot by marrying me. He bragged about how he hadn't worked in two years and was living off my salary and my family's generosity. The worst part was when he said, and the best is yet to come. Once we have a kid, I'll be set for life. Child support from a rich family. It's the ultimate long con, man. I was devastated. All the love I thought we shared, all the dreams we had talked about, it was all a lie. Peter had been using me from the start, seeing me as nothing more than a meal ticket. In that moment, every odd behavior, every argument about money, every push towards having children, it all made sense in the worst possible way. I confronted Peter immediately. At first, he tried to deny it, claiming I had misunderstood. But when I pressed him, his true colors came out. 
He sneered at me, calling me naive for not seeing it sooner. He said marrying into money was the smartest thing he'd ever done and that I should be grateful someone like him had even looked twice at me. His words cut deep, bringing up insecurities I thought I'd left behind in high school. Back then, I had struggled with my self-image, always wondering if people liked me for me or for my family's money. Peter's betrayal brought all those feelings rushing back. I kicked Peter out that night and called a lawyer the next day. I'm in the process of filing for divorce, but Peter is fighting it every step of the way. He's threatening to drag my family's name through the mud if I don't agree to a large settlement. He's even hinted at having dirt on my father's business practices, though I'm sure it's just another bluff. My parents and Sadie are supporting me through this, but I can't help feeling like a fool. How did I not see this coming? Was I really so blind? Sadie reminds me that love can make us overlook red flags, but it's hard not to blame myself. Peter's family is blowing up my phone, calling me heartless for throwing away our marriage over a little misunderstanding. They're saying I'm overreacting and that all marriages have rough patches. His mother, in particular, keeps leaving tearful voicemails about how Peter has changed and deserves another chance. I know in my heart that leaving is the right thing to do, but part of me still loves the man I thought Peter was. The man who brought me soup when I was sick, who remembered every anniversary of our first date, who could make me laugh even on my worst days. It's hard to reconcile that man with the person I now know Peter to be. Am I the asshole for ending our marriage over this? Should I have tried to work things out instead of immediately going for divorce? I feel like I'm in a daze, questioning every moment of our relationship. Any advice or perspective would be appreciated. Update 1. It's been two months since my last post, and a lot has happened. First, I want to thank everyone for their supportive comments. Your words gave me strength during some really dark days. The divorce proceedings are underway, and it's been a roller coaster. Peter is fighting tooth and nail for every penny he can get. His lawyer is trying to paint me as a spoiled rich girl who's throwing away her marriage on a whim. It's infuriating, but my lawyer assures me we have a strong case. One unexpected development was the appearance of Megan, 28F, Peter's ex-girlfriend. She reached out to me through social media after hearing about our divorce. At first, I was hesitant to talk to her, but I'm glad I did. Megan revealed that Peter had pulled a similar stunt with her family years ago. He had charmed her wealthy parents and was on the verge of proposing when she caught him cheating. It seems I wasn't his first attempt at a long con. Megan's story gave me the push I needed to dig deeper into Peter's past. With the help of a private investigator, I uncovered a pattern of Peter targeting wealthy women. There were at least three other relationships before me where he had attempted to integrate himself into rich families. This information has been a godsend for my divorce case. The investigator also uncovered some interesting details about Peter's background. It turns out that much of what he told me about his family was a lie. His father wasn't a high school teacher, but a small-time con artist who had done time for fraud. His mother wasn't a librarian, but had never held a steady job. His siblings, whom he claimed were so successful, didn't even exist. Peter had crafted an entire false persona to make himself seem more appealing and relatable. Learning about Peter's true background was a shock, but it also helped me understand how he became the person he is. It doesn't excuse his actions, but it provides some context. It also made me realize how much of our relationship was built on lies from the very beginning. On the personal front, I've moved out of our shared apartment and am staying with Sadie for now. It's been healing to be around family, away from all the memories of my life with Peter. Sadie has been my rock through all of this, always ready with a shoulder to cry on or a pint of ice cream when needed. Living with Sadie has also brought us closer than we've been in years. We've stayed up late many nights, talking about our childhood, our hopes for the future, and the lessons we've learned from our relationships. It's reminded me of the strong support system I have in my family, something I had started to lose sight of during my marriage to Peter. I've also started seeing a counselor to work through my feelings of betrayal and self-doubt. It's helping me realize that Peter's actions are a reflection of his character, not my worth. I'm learning to trust my instincts again and to recognize the red flags I missed before. One of the hardest things has been dealing with the memories of the good times with Peter. The counselor is helping me understand that those moments weren't necessarily fake, but they were part of Peter's manipulation. He needed to create good memories and loving moments to keep me invested in the relationship. It's a difficult concept to grasp, but I'm working on it. Work has been a welcome distraction. I threw myself into a big project, and it's paying off. I just got a promotion to senior marketing executive, which feels like a personal victory in the midst of all this chaos. My boss has been incredibly understanding throughout this process, allowing me flexible hours to attend legal meetings and counseling sessions. The project I've been working on is a campaign for a local charity that supports victims of financial abuse. The irony isn't lost on me, but it's been therapeutic to channel my experiences into something positive. I've even been considering volunteering for the charity once things settle down. Peter's family is still harassing me, but I've blocked their numbers and social media accounts. My lawyer advised me to keep all communication through official channels, which has been a relief. However, Peter's younger sister, who I now know doesn't exist, showed up at my office last week, causing a scene. Security had to escort her out, and we're now looking into a restraining order. As for Peter, he's changed tactics. Now that he knows I've uncovered his past, he's trying to play the repentant husband. He sent flowers to my office, left tearful voicemails about how he's realized the error of his ways, and even showed up at Sadie's place begging for another chance. I'm not falling for it this time. 
The divorce proceedings are moving slowly, but I'm determined to see this through. I know now that I deserve better than a marriage based on lies and manipulation. It's not easy, and there are days when I miss the life I thought I had, but I'm taking it one day at a time. Thank you all again for your support. I'll update again when there are more developments. Update 2. It's been another three months, and I'm finally starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. The divorce proceedings are nearing their end, and it looks like things will wrap up in my favor. Peter's attempts to get a large settlement have largely failed, thanks to the evidence we gathered about his past schemes. His lawyer tried to argue that his contributions to our marriage weren't solely financial, but the judge wasn't buying it. It looks like Peter will walk away with much less than he hoped for. One unexpected twist came when Peter's younger brother, Tom, 27M, reached out to me. Unlike the rest of Peter's family, Tom apologized for his brother's behavior. He revealed that Peter has always been the black sheep of the family, constantly looking for get-rich-quick schemes. Tom provided some childhood anecdotes that helped paint a clearer picture of Peter's character for the court. Tom's stories about their childhood were eye-opening. He told me about how Peter would manipulate their parents, always finding ways to get what he wanted. There was the time Peter convinced their parents to buy him a car by forging a job offer letter, or the summer he pretended to attend summer school but was actually running a small-time gambling operation. These stories, while shocking, helped me understand the depth of Peter's deception and manipulation. On a personal note, I've moved into my own apartment. It's smaller than the place I shared with Peter, but it feels like home. Decorating it has been therapeutic, a way of reclaiming my space and my identity. I've filled it with things that are meaningful to me, family photos, art pieces I've collected over the years, and books that I love. It's a space that reflects who I am, not who Peter wanted me to be. I've also reconnected with old friends who had drifted away during my marriage. It turns out Peter had been subtly isolating me from my support network. Rebuilding these friendships has been a joy I didn't know I was missing. Last weekend, I had a girls' night with my college roommates. We laughed, cried, and reminded each other of the strong, independent women we've always been. Work continues to be a positive aspect of my life. The project I mentioned in my last update was a huge success, and I've been given the lead on an even bigger campaign. It feels good to be recognized for my skills and hard work. I'm also finding that my experience with Peter has given me a unique perspective that's valuable in my work. I'm more attuned to the nuances of human behavior and motivation, which has improved my marketing strategies. As for Peter, he's finally seemed to accept that the marriage is over. His last-ditch effort was to send a lengthy email detailing all the good times we had together. While it did stir up some emotions, it also reinforced how much of our relationship was built on his lies. I didn't respond to the email, but I did forward it to my lawyer as it contained some admissions that might be useful in the final settlement. I'm not ready to date again, but I'm starting to feel hopeful about the future. The counseling is helping me work through my trust issues, and I'm learning to enjoy my own company again. I've taken up yoga and started learning to play the guitar, things I've always wanted to do but never found the time for when I was with Peter. My relationship with my parents has also improved through this ordeal. They've been incredibly supportive, never once saying I told you so even though they had their reservations about Peter from the start. We've had some deep conversations about love, trust, and the pressures of growing up with wealth. These talks have brought us closer and helped heal some old wounds. Thank you all for your continued support. Your comments and messages have been a source of strength throughout this ordeal. I'll post one final update when the divorce is finalized. Update 3. It's finally over. After eight long months, the divorce has been finalized. I'm officially no longer married to Peter, and it feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. The final settlement was fair. Peter didn't get the windfall he was hoping for, but he did walk away with some money. I'm just glad it's done and I can move on with my life. The judge saw through Peter's attempts to paint himself as a devoted husband and made it clear that his pattern of deception wouldn't be rewarded. There was one last surprise in store. On the day of our final court appearance, Peter's mother, 58F, approached me. She apologized for her family's behavior and admitted that deep down, they had always known about Peter's true nature. She handed me a small box containing some family heirlooms that Peter had given me during our marriage. It was a bittersweet moment, but I appreciated her gesture. Peter's mother shared some insights into Peter's childhood that helped me understand him better. She spoke about his father's criminal activities and how that affected their family dynamics. Peter had grown up watching his father con people, and it seemed he had internalized those behaviors. While it doesn't excuse his actions, it provided some context for how he became the person he is. As for me, I'm doing better than I ever expected. The promotion I mentioned in my last update has opened up new opportunities at work. I'm traveling more for business, which has been a great way to gain some new perspectives. Last month, I attended a marketing conference in New York, and it was refreshing to be in a new environment, focused on my career and personal growth. I've also started volunteering at a local women's shelter, sharing my story and helping other women who have been in manipulative relationships. It's been healing to turn my negative experience into something positive. The women I've met there have shown incredible strength and resilience, which inspires me daily. My relationship with my family has grown stronger through all of this. We recently took a family vacation, something we hadn't done since I was in college. We spent a week at a beach house, just relaxing and reconnecting. It was a wonderful reminder of the genuine love and support I have in my life. Sadie and I have maintained our close bond. We have a standing weekly sister date where we try new restaurants or activities around the city. 
It's become something I look forward to every week. I'm still playing the guitar and have even started writing my own songs. Music has become a therapeutic outlet for me, helping me process my emotions in a healthy way. I'm not ready for any public performances yet, but who knows what the future holds? I'm not ready to jump back into dating just yet, but I'm no longer afraid of the idea. I know now that I'm strong enough to stand on my own, and that any future relationship will be on my terms. I'm taking the time to really get to know myself and what I want out of life. To everyone who has followed my story and offered support, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your kindness and encouragement helped me through the darkest days. If there's one thing I've learned from all of this, it's that there's always hope for a brighter future, even when things seem bleakest. This will be my final update. It's time to close this chapter of my life and focus on the exciting possibilities ahead. While the experience with Peter was painful, it's taught me valuable lessons about self-worth, resilience, and the importance of genuine relationships. I'm looking forward to whatever comes next, knowing that I'm stronger and wiser for having gone through this.